In this session, we will discuss about Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law deals with a force a point charge exerts on another point charge. Suppose we have two point charges Q1 and Q2. The force exerted by this point charge Q1 on this uh, point charge Q2, let's say this is force is F12, is given by Coulomb's law. So here F12 means the force exerted by charge Q1 on charge Q2. Before stating the Coulomb's law, we will try to understand the meaning of point charge. Because Coulomb's law explains the force between the two point charges. Suppose we have two charged bodies. Let's say the dimension or the radius of uh, this uh, sphere is R. So these uh, two bodies are charged, let's say with uh, plus Q1 and plus Q2. And if uh, the distance between these two is let's say R. So here R is the radius of this uh, uh, sphere which has the charge plus Q1. And uh, suppose if this R is that is the dimension of charged body is very much less than the other uh, the dimension L. So in this case these two charged bodies can be treated as point charges. So we can say that a point charge is a charge that is located on a body whose dimensions are much smaller than other relevant, relevant dimensions. Coulomb's law gives the expression for force between these two charged bodies which are at rest. So according to Coulomb's law, the force exerted by the point charge Q1 on point charge Q2 is given by K into Q1 Q2 divided by R square. So here R is the distance between the two charges and Q1 and Q2 are the charges on this two point charges and here k is the proportionality constant and in SI units k is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So here epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. And here epsilon naught is given by 8.8584 into 10 power minus 12 farad per meter which is approximately equal to 10 power minus 9 divided by 36 pi. Therefore, K is given by 9 into 10 power 9 meter per farad. 
so therefore f12 now is given by q1 q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square so we can see that here the force uh, between these two point charges q1 and q2 is uh, along the line joining these two charges that means the force on the direction of the force on q2 due to q1 can be found uh, is uh, along a line joining these two charges similarly the force acting on q1 due to q2 is again along the line joining the two charges so here f21 is the force exerted by charge q2 on charge q1 and the force is proportional to the product of these two charges and this force f12 is uh, inversely proportional to the distance between these two charges. The expression give, given here gives only the magnitude of the force between these two charges. It does not give information about the direction of the force So let us try to discuss about the Coulomb's line vector form. So suppose we have two charges Q1 and Q2 and let's say this is the origin. And uh, let's say this is the position vector r1 so here the position r vector r1 gives the position of the point charge q1 similarly the position vector R2 gives the position of charge Q2. So this is the vector R12 pointing from charge Q1 to charge Q2. So F12 is the force acting on charge Q2 due to Q1. So the Coulomb's law in the vector form can be stated like this. It is given by Q1 Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R12 square. unit vector ER12. So here this is the unit vector ER12 is the unit vector in the direction R12. So here the vector R12 is given by vector R2 minus vector R1. And R12 indicates here the magnitude of the vector R12. And the unit vector ER12 is given by vector R12 divided by 
the magnitude of the vector r12 or it's also given by r2 minus r1 divided by magnitude of r2 minus r1 so therefore this force can be rewritten as q1 q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught So this expression gives you the both the magnitude of the force and the direction of the force. So in this expression, in this expression. In this expression, the charges Q1 and Q2 are in coulombs, and the distance R12 is in meters, and the force is in newtons. Some of the points to be noted are the force excited by the charges on one another that is a force acting on 2 due to 1 is equal and opposite to the force exerted on charge Q2 due to one. I'm sorry. Here F12 is the force exerted by charge Q1 on charge Q2 and F21 is the force excited by charge Q2 on 1. So here you can see that they are equal and opposite that is they have the same magnitude but opposite direction. And another point to be noted is if you have two charges of same polarity that is in this case both are positive charges the forces are repulsive in nature that is these two poles these two charges repel. Similarly, if both charges are of negative or negative, then also they repel. But whereas uh, if one of the charges is positive, other one is negative, then it's an attractive force. It's, uh, and one more point to be noted is here both the charges Q1 and Q2 must be static. Suppose we have number of charges Q1, Q2 up to Q, Qn and the position vectors of these charges are given by R1 dash, R2 dash, Rn dash and uh, uh, this is the test charge Q which is given by the position vector R. Then in that case the force acting on the charge F is given by the vector sum of the forces acting on charge Q due to the individual charges Q1, Q2 up to Qn as given in this expression. 